It's another action-packed edition of Weather for Weather Geeks, the edition for Wednesday evening, the 10th day of February. And uh, what a day we've had today. It's gone pretty much according to plan. We had a fairly quiet start with just some flurries and some coatings this morning. Pardon me. As we got into the afternoon, the snow showers and snow squalls got going, leading to some accumulations, some problems on the roads. We've had numerous crashes, unfortunately, around the area. And that's pretty typical in these whiteout situations where the visibility suddenly drops you can get all sorts of issues like that. We're going to look at a time-lapse video from our weather camera along 422 in Niles. This starts at 7 a.m. and runs up until about 7 p.m. this evening, or a little before 7 p.m. Again, the morning, not many problems. Then watch the waves of snow showers come in. They whiten up the road, and then traffic kind of clears things, and then it gets white again. And we kind of had this same scene play out throughout the valley uh, during the course of the afternoon and early evening, and we can still see that scene play out as we go into the night tonight. Now, as I recorded this at 7.20 p.m., uh, the main squall that caused a lot of problems has is, is pushing out of our viewing area. It's uh, clearing East Liverpool and Calcutta and heading over into Beaver County. There's still snow showers around, though, and there's more off to the north and to the west. Uh, put an hour loop on this. You can see everything continues to drift to the south and east. So as we go through the night, there's going to be plenty of dry time. There's going to be times in which it's snowing lightly, and there's going to be times in which we're going to be dealing with a heftier squall. Here's the, our high-resolution futurecast model uh, showing us another band of sh snow showers pushing through maybe midnight to 2 a.m., low in the action around 3.34. I think by the time we get to daybreak tomorrow, whatever is left over is pretty much just flurries. We're not looking for much in the way of additional accumulation during the daylight hours tomorrow. Now, in addition to what's already fallen, here's how much more we can expect as a general rule. Now, you know, when you're covering four or five counties, there's going to be exceptions to these rules, just depending on uh, what the atmosphere decides to do. But I think as a general rule, everyone has a pretty good chance to see at least another fresh coating. The most likely additional accumulation tonight is one to perhaps two or three inches. Depends on if you get a, a decent squall or not. The absolute most I can see is four. I, I don't think many see that much snow because I think the heaviest squall affecting the most people has already passed. That's what rolled through Mahoning and Columbiana County from about 5 to 6.30 or 7 this evening. So that's what you can expect. As far as the impacts, uh, still some slick travel on the roads, certainly, especially in the middle of those snow showers. Not concerned about any power outages with this. This isn't a heavy, wet, moisture-laden snow that can weigh down tree limbs and power lines. No, nothing like that. In fact, you can take a broom to a lot of this snow. It's very dry snow. And oftentimes, in these lake effect situations with Arctic air, you can have snow to liquid ratios of 15, 20, even 30 to 1. That means it's a very dry snow and it can accumulate more efficiently when it's that dry. When you have wet snow, it tends to compact and your accumulation numbers don't tend to be as impressive, even though that kind of snow is better for making snowballs and snowmen. Now, school adjustments, uh, this is kind of a tough call. Uh, I'm certainly no expert at this, and uh, those decisions are made on the uh, local level, of course, with school districts. I have nothing to do with that, but there could be some at least two-hour delays tomorrow, I suspect, because of overnight snow showers leading to slick spots on the roads and the possibility of some pretty nasty wind chills tomorrow morning. Now, these wind chills are not going to be life-threatening or anything like that, but if we're going to wake up tomorrow morning generally in the zero to five below range, I think, as far as wind chills go. And they're not going to recover much during the daylight hours, probably just up to three, four, five degrees above zero. It's going to be a blustery cold day on Thursday. Actual temperatures kind of where they are now. These temperatures are what we'll, we're going to have for most of the day tomorrow, mostly in the teens. Of course, it's even colder out to the, uh, the north and west. We've got single digits, parts of the upper Midwest. And then you head up into Canada, and the numbers just get obscene as usual. <laughs> Minus 30 up in parts of northern Canada. Our air is going to be originating up here by the time the weekend uh, comes around. Of course, it'll be in a modified form. We're not going to see this type of horrendous cold over the weekend, but it certainly will be the coldest weather of the winter season so far, and probably we won't see anything like this again this winter. All right, as far as our next couple of days, tomorrow afternoon the flurry machine tries to shut down. might be a peak or two of sun. High pressure drifts across briefly, and then we cloud back up on Friday. And I think Friday morning's pretty quiet, but I think as we go deeper into the afternoon Friday and into Friday night, there's going to be a band of snow showers that rolls through. It's mostly out of the way here by Saturday morning, but th there could be more accumulations with this, maybe something on the order of 1 to 3, 2 to 4, something like that. Uh, we'll hone in more on that situation once we're done with tonight's snow showers, but enough to maybe shovel late Friday into Friday night. And then, of course, the big story is the harsh cold for the upcoming weekend. This is a nasty-looking weather map on Saturday with Arctic high pressure off to our west. 
Look how closely packed together the isobars are. It's going to be windy. We're going to have a hard time getting to 10. Wind chills will be below zero all day. Check out the wind chills as we go into the weekend, Saturday morning, probably around 10 below. Boy, I showed you this yesterday. It could be worse. Look at these numbers in southeastern Canada, <laughs> Toronto, and up towards Peterborough and Bancroft, Kingston, minus 45, the wind chill Saturday morning. Our wind chills stay below zero all day Saturday, even in the afternoon. And for Valentine's Day on Sunday, uh, wind chills probably mostly below zero, even though the actual air temperature will be in the teens and the wind will tend to slacken as we go into the day Sunday. But you don't need much of a breeze when temperatures are in the teens to create some pretty nasty wind chill numbers. All right, you know, I've heard uh, a lot of speculation, a lot of questions and rumors about a snowstorm for early next week. Um, it is possible that we have accumulating snow early next week, but there's a tremendous amount of model disagreement right now with the details of how early next week will transpire. A lot of options are on the table. Uh, one of those options, of course, being that we don't see any accumulating snow. I think there's still a chance of that. Uh, here's the, the uh, afternoon GFS run showing by Monday morning a band of light to moderate snow pushing through for Monday morning. And then the GFS takes that moderate snow away and there's flurries for the rest of Monday. No big deal. Uh, then it has a low pressure system kind of forming down along the tail end of the front and moving up the east coast with perhaps snow for the central Appalachians, but probably not this far back. Now this run looks a little different than the morning run of the GFS. Here's the morning run of the GFS Tuesday afternoon showing that low much farther offshore and, we and weaker. Here's the afternoon run farther west spreading the snow farther west. But taken literally, even if even if the GFS were to be exactly right, this would be a maybe a one to three inch snow late Sunday night into Monday. Not a big storm at all. That's the GFS. When we look at the European Ensemble model, and what this uh, particular view does is it plots up all the locations of low pressure in the 52 members of the European Ensemble. Notice Tuesday afternoon how many, how far apart the L's are. There's L's all over this map, meaning the, the Europeans having a very hard time figuring out where the center of this storm is going to be. Um, so that leads to a very low confidence forecast for early next week. Um, could be dry. We could have a minor snow event, or if some variations of the ensembles are correct. We could have enough to shovel and plow and cause some disruptions Monday into Tuesday. A lot to sort out. Let's get through tonight and, and even our, our snow coming late Friday, Friday night before we uh, you know really talk more about early next week. Uh, so low confidence forecast. If you see people sharing stuff on social media that says, oh, there's snow coming, don't share it. If they're that confident, they're wrong. Nobody is that confident. Now, nobody who knows what they're doing is that confident in uh, any sort of snow prospects for early on next week. Trust, uh, use trusted sources. Know who your sources are, and uh, if you if you're not sure who your who who the information's coming from, don't share it. Don't spread panic on social media. It helps us out. Thanks for watching tonight's weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you right back here tomorrow evening. Fresh forecast, radar, everything else coming up tonight on Twenty One News at eleven. Have a great night.